Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle podcast, episode number 20. There's nothing creative about living within your means. Francis Ford Coppola. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, welcome, guys. This is your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Don't forget to head over to freefilmbook.com. That's freefilmbook.com to download your free film audiobook. Now, guys, this episode uh, is uh, something I've been wanting to bring to, to you guys for a while. The, f- the whole concept of the uh, camera porn, as they call it, uh, people being so caught up with, like, I'm shooting 4K, I'm shooting 6K, I'm shooting... I'm shooting with the area Alexa, this grade, this range, and this aspect ratio, and this size of file, and it's kind of like you know I'm going to shoot with the red weapon, and because I shoot with the red weapon or shoot 6K, it's going to make my movie better. You know, no, it doesn't. It, it's about story, uh, and it's always about story. So I wanted to kind of go over a few things. Uh, one, of, some reasons why you shouldn't, if you're an indie filmmaker. You have to understand there's a lot of things. Like I, whenever I shoot anything, I always shoot at a high resolution, as high as I can get that I can handle. So, um, But I also have a post house. So there's a big difference. It is within my capabilities to shoot 4K or shoot 6K. I have the hard drives. I have the, the horsepower to push that kind of stuff. Where people get caught up or filmmakers get kind of in trouble is when they, they, get, that, they, get, that, um, they get that red epic or red... A weapon or uh, God knows whatever the camera has 15k or whatever that is at the moment um, and then they have no understanding of how to work through it and I did this episode uh, a little bit ago on uh, post-production workflow which is is be actually the most popular uh, episode of uh, of the entire series of uh, indie film hustle so that told me a lot that people are really really interested in understanding this kind of stuff that I guess nobody's really talking about so Um, I wanted to bring to you guys the reasons why you should not uh, shoot 4K if you're an indie filmmaker. First and foremost, nobody can really tell the difference. (laughs) Uh, Even if you shoot at 4K, no one's going to be able to see the 4K. Unless you're at a very specific distance uh, that you can actually appreciate 4K, but most people are not, you're not going to see the difference, honestly. And I I, I deal with this kind of stuff all the time uh, in in my post-production company. Uh, and a lot of things are being eventually going to end up on an iPhone, an iPad, or a computer screen. So really, it's almost a waste shooting at 4K. Now, with that said, there is advantages of shooting at a higher resolution or higher aspect ratio, like a 4K or 6K. Your ability to be able to zoom in, recompose shots, things like that. Again, all wonderful things as long as you have the capabilities of handling it. Now, it will. second thing, it will stretch your budget uh, and take a ton more time to deal with these bigger files, these raw files, these 4K or 6K files. Uh, it's like shooting on the Black Magic and you're shooting ProRes or you're going to shoot RAW. Well, RAW is a beast to deal with, especially the, the, the Black Magic's uh, RAW Kodak is not that great. Red is actually the best uh, Kodak I've ever seen, meaning that um, the size of the frame, let's say the size of the image and the size of the file is like it's very manageable in that in that ratio, but still shooting at 4K, shooting at 6K uh, or higher, it's going to stretch your budget because you're going to need more hard drives. You're going to have to copy it and you know back it up more and more. So it's going to need. It's going to also take a lot more time to transfer these larger files. And again, for what? That's the question you have to ask yourself. What is this doing for my film? Is it just ego? Am I just wanting to to say, hey, I shot this at 4K? You know, 2K is a phenomenal format for an independent filmmaker. It's wonderful. Like, that is what was being, uh, you know, all the movies from five years ago and back probably were all being mastered at 2K. Most movies are still being mastered at 2K. But if you're going to transfer to film or do a DCP, every instant, 2K is perfectly fine. It is wonderful and affordable and you can do something with it. You know, I've actually had a theatrical movie that I worked on that we shot that was mastered in 1080p and then we went and blew it up to uh, 2k for a 400 screen release um, by a major studio and it looked great and we shot and we and we did it on dcp and we up and we put it onto film and believe it or not i was editing i was coloring this going back a little bit i was coloring in apple's color so it wasn't even like the highest end coloring system at the time believe it or not 
So something something colored a shot on a red and they shot it at 4K. We were able to handle the workflow, but we edited and mastered everything at 1080p because they could not afford the mastering process to go to 4K. There was just, and, and, it, and there was so many zoom ins and things like that that it just didn't make any sense to do it. So they mastered at 2K. And then we colored in color and then output it to film and to DCP, a uh, digital cinema package for people who don't understand that is the digital package that uh, movie theaters want uh, or need in order to project digitally uh, in any standard movie theater uh, throughout the country. So all of that was being, all of that was done with a 2K master. Don't underestimate the power of 2K, please. And and it's I'm just it's something I see so many filmmakers like I just got a film, a uh, guy shot uh, a little while ago. We we had a film come in through the doors that was shot uh, on the uh, the weapon, uh, a Red's weapon, and we shot 6K. And they could they could barely even do anything with it. Like they could barely move it. They were able like the editor who was editing it was like, "What do we do? This is too much." And and again, it all goes to back to workflow. And they were like, yeah, we're, we're thinking of mastering at 6K. And I'm like, are you absolutely mad? You can't master at 6K. Hell, you can't even master at 4K. Now, the other reason why you wouldn't want to master at, at 4K and mastering at 4K is, in my opinion, at this point in 2015, um, is ludicrous. It's You don't need to. You can. Great. Fantastic. But you don't need to. And I know a lot of people are going to talk about future-proofing. Oh, you know, 4K monitors and 6K monitors coming out in the future. Great. That's wonderful. Do you know how much how much material, movies, media that is in the marketplace right now from the past 100 years that is not at 2K or 4K levels? You know, seriously, there is tons and tons of stuff. So the whole excuse of future proofing, again, if you can afford it and if you have the horsepower to do it, by all means, knock yourself out. But most independent filmmakers are not made of money, and most independent filmmakers don't have the resources to be able to push 4K in a mastering format or even in an editing editing uh, editing process. So, the other reason that you shouldn't be mastering at 4K um, is that distribution's not ready for 4K yet. You know, right now, streaming companies like Netflix, Hulu, or Amazon can only deliver between 60 and 60 megabytes per second, while 4K delivery is 6,000 megabytes per second, just so you understand. So would you rather sh- would you rather master at 2K or 1080p and it be really tight and look good and not be super, super compressed to be able to, to make it work within Netflix or Hulu or, or your VOD uh, format? Or would you rather master at 4K where they're going to jam so much compression on it, the movie's going to look like crap when you do get it finally out into a Netflix environment or Hulu or uh, Amazon or so forth. So think about it. Think about it. 4K right now is not a requirement for mo- uh, for movie distribution deals. But the good news is, believe it or not, the 35 millimeter is becoming a discussion now. Now, I come from a world where I used to work in 35 millimeter all the time. Now, people are like, oh, film is dead. Film is dead. Film is, it might be dead. It is a shooting format. I don't think it will be. I hope it's always around. I hope it's an option for filmmakers. Um, it's a wonderful option. But um, right now, film is still the only sure way to ensure that your film will survive through time. A uh, film will ensure that your movie will survive at least 150 years in a salt vault, vault somewhere, as opposed to hard drives which is five years old, five years tops for a hard drive. So you're constantly having to change your hard drive. You're also going to, as new codecs come out, new compressions come out, new everything comes out, you're going to be constantly recompressing it, re-outputting it, read this, read that, all, all of it. But if you master it on a film or you archive it on film and you put it in a salt mine somewhere in, in Utah uh, where all the studios have their, uh, their, all their, all the backlog of studio like Warner Brothers, Disney, all that, they all have their stuff on film. And they put it in these salt vaults and they sit there for hundreds, you know, for decades. Uh, and it protects them. You know, that's how they were able to go back and, you know, they dug up Star Wars. You know, they dug up the original prints from Star Wars when they were doing the, the re-releases of it. And Jaws and all these other great movies. That's how they did it. They didn't put it on hard drives. So right now there is a discussion going on with a lot of distributors that they want uh, 35 millimeter prints, uh, master prints, 
so they can archive it. Now, this is obviously much bigger studios, much bigger distributors, but it is a discussion as things are, uh, people are starting to, to talk about again because it is what works. You know, digital is wonderful, but film is what works as far as a archiving format. So if you don't believe me that you won't see the difference between 2K and 4K, go do a test. Go to the lab if you have a lab and master, you know, have them output, you know, four, you know, like five, four minutes, three minutes of, uh, of some scenes. Uh, and, and don't tell, and tell them not to tell you what's what. Have them do a 1080, have them do a 2K and have them do a 4K, you know, and just, and see how it works and see what it, what it looks like. See what ProRes looks like. See what uncompressed looks like. So just take a look at it on the screen. Or wherever your final output's going to be, and that's the other question, guys. You got to figure out what you're going to out. Where, where's your fi- end game on this? You know, if it's theatrical, which is great, and that's a wonderful thing, um, you focus on theatrical. But remember, theatrical is a very small window of how people are going to consume your media or consume your movie. It's a very small window. It's mostly going to be consumed on uh, on streaming formats. Specifically now, more more than ever on the streaming formats, and on a lesser to, lesser note, uh, DVD and Blu-ray for as long as they'll they'll be around with us. But it's going to be a digital streaming format, so that means it's going to be either on TV, on your monitors, on your iPhones, on your iPads, or on your computer monitor. And more and more people are watching movies on their iPhones, iPads, and computer monitors, and then also on their TVs as well. But the, the mobile devices are coming up, so. You work all this hard, and I and I do this. With, I did this. Um, I'm going to do a little s- quick side note. I have a buddy of mine who's a, a master. Uh, he does a, a mastering of um, audio, audio mastering, and um, he actually has a full blown Atmos, um, you know, rig, so you can do the utmost, like the the most amazing surround sound, state of the art surround sound that you can get. And he has all that and for a feature for a feature release theatrically and for a five one mix for your you know for your home stereo system or for your home uh, entertainment system. And then I I was there listening to the mix and then I saw these two little crappy speakers on the top of the on the top of the console and he was like well, I go what's that for he goes oh that's for when I mix this for for VOD or for digital uh, or for an iPad or for YouTube or online I'm like really he goes yeah because. I could do all this work on this 5.1 mix, but if you crunch down that 5.1 mix or the Atmos mix down to a stereo that's going to be playing outside of an iPod or iPad uh, or iPhone, it's going to sound like shite. So, um, so what he's he's like, I have to remix it for the worst case scenario. So he had to go back and remix it for the worst case scenario. So even audio is already, already dealing with this, with the whole new technology, how fast it's changing. So, do that test, guys, and let me know what, you know, figure it out. If you can actually see a huge difference between the 4K and the 2K, uh, you know, apples to apples, then my God, go to 4K. But again, it's all about your money. It's how much money you have, how many resources you have, and what kind of horsepower you have to push it, you know. So my advice for indie filmmakers on a budget, you know, that have small budgets anywhere from, and I'm not going to say what budget it is because I've worked on million-dollar movies that didn't have the horsepower after everything was said and done because they didn't have enough money in their post-budget. So it's all relative to what mon- how much money you have. If I were you, I, like I've always said, bring in a post-production supervisor during pre-production or at least consult with a post-production supervisor before you start production. It's so valuable. You have no idea. If you really want to go to 4K and you really want to shoot 4K and master to 4K or shoot 6K uh, and master to whatever you want to master to, 4K, 2K, whatever, at least you, you really should have an understanding of what it's actually going to take financially between hard drives and backup hard drives and DITs on set and how fast it's going to go and all this kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, guys, it's really not about um, about what the camera is or how what kind of Ks you have on your, how many Ks, different Ks you have on your format that you're shooting on. It's always about story. You know, we don't have a lack of cameras with four, six K or high resolution cameras in the world. We have a lack of good storytellers. We have a lack of good filmmakers out there because they're so concentrated on getting the latest gear and they're not learning their craft of storytelling. So my advice is always look at the story first and then look at the gear that's going to help you tell that story and the resources that are going to help you tell that story in the best way. 
So I hope you guys got a lot out of this episode. It's something that's been dear to my heart for a while. I really wanted people to, to kind of understand because there is a lot of confusion between all the damn K's all over the place in the world and how how big the files and all that stuff is concerned. But I hope this is some practical advice to hopefully get your guys movie movies off the ground and, and actually get made and finished. So, of course, if anyone has any questions, I do offer consulting, post-production supervision, and post-production consulting on indie p- films. Just head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash consulting and let me know. Also, don't forget to head over to FilmFestivalTips.com. That's FilmFestivalTips.com. So you can download my free ebook on how to get into film festivals for cheap or free. As always, keep that hustle going. Keep following those dreams. Keep making it happen. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com. 